My name is Molly O'Neill. I'm the author of One Big Table, A Portrait of American Cooking. And for the last decade, I've been traveling around the country investigating reports that Americans do not cook anymore. Should I make us a dinner reservation? Or you give me your exact address. You boil them, okay. Do you need to get that other line? These are serious allegations. And I'm pleased to report that the rumors are greatly exaggerated. Okay, I know it's weird, huh? So tell me how the difference in the fisheries affected the chowder that you make. You're so famous for your chowder. Yeah. How it's affected it? Yeah. I have to. <laughs> I have to order my fish out of Canada when I want to make one. That's how it's affected it. <laughs> Terrible. It's awful. We didn't have, have a fish here. We caught all we could catch. That's how we was born and brought up. Mm -hmm. and, and if we had more daylight, we'd stay there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the thing. Only take so many from the bottom each day. Uh huh. Uh huh. And you'll have them. So then you had this epiphany about 15 years ago that you had to change the definition of a good fisherman. When I saw the things declining and the things shutting down, I knew that. Uh, we had to do something. Right. How we was going to do it, we don't know. Yeah. But we're going to try to uh, talk to the fishermen and see what they could get along with and how many nets, uh, whatever. What do you think America loses if we lose our native fisheries? This country, it needs more people like us. Hand workers. All right? Not just head workers. You made your life with your own hands. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And those people are... That they're different. Uh, they're, they're, the other ones are fine, but I'm just saying the people that work with their hands are a whole lot different. How many times do you make chowder, you know, for benefits and things now? Six or eight times a year. Boy, oh boy, Dick. What, do you like the tail or the claw better? I guess that's the eternal debate, isn't it? Yeah, it is Molly. <laughs> what? Nothing. What did you yes. say? You've always been a tail man? Is that what you said? Well, more or less. <laughs>
I have a rule that all the animals that get butchered get butchered here. Uh huh. I don't send them off to a abattoir where they're going to be scared to death. Yeah, yeah. So in consequence, that's just one more thing on my list that's honorable and illegal. Yeah, it's okay, here's some cheese and some oh, chutney. Oh what is this? Well, oh. it's Wensleydale. Oh my lord. So oh, last, the winter before last, I made 2,000 pounds of cheese hand milking. The cows and spending a fifth, day, you know, one day out of five in the cheese room. And I gave it all away because I refused to comply with regulations that will undermine my ability to be good to my few cows and um, do a good job. Julia Child was my idol, and I got Julia's mastering out of their little local library there in Northern California and just went over that 30 page. French bread method yeah. over and over and over again until I got it. So, Julia, great lady. I lived in um, Cambridge, right across the street from her house, <laughs> the house I was living in. And I worked in an Italian restaurant. And that was very difficult for her to understand why anybody would want to work in an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. But she, she came. She loved the food. She brought, she brought these famous chefs back. She was all about generosity, mm -hmm. and all I think that's the basis of food. I'm sure that there's a link between gratitude and nutrition. You know, it's where racing off to the, you know, little, little Kimberly's piano lesson or whatever that you know people do now and don't spend time cooking. You know. So, tell me more about what you do. I'm interested in people. I mean, I know about cooking, and I'm, I'm fascinated by people's cooking, but I'm really fascinated by their lives. Mm -hmm. And why have they made the choices they make, and how does food fit into that? Yeah. You know, why do you cook bread? Why do you make cheese? Why did you think of chutney? To me, that begins to show the spirit of individuality, and, and food is one of the last places that... Americans do exert personal choice and have personal tastes. Hey, do you know where Ellie called from? Ellie is planting uh, wheat. Oh, you just missed her. It's right over there. You want me to show you? That'd be great. Okay, just turn around. I'll... Okie dokie. <laughs> hey, how Bye. are you? Hi, I'm Molly. Hi, how do you do? Good to, good to meet you. Oh, careful, look. careful, careful. Look at what do you have here. Mm. <laughs> Holy is, smoke, I, Ellie. The, the, my whole house is a gene bin. <laughs> well, it is. This is Emma, and this is Einkorn. And this is the variety of wheat that was eaten in ancient Mesopotamia. Oh, my God. How did you get that? I collected it in the Golan Heights from Druze Arabs. I do a lot of collecting field work. Put it in hand. And this is twice as high in protein and minerals than modern What an aroma. Wheat. Oh, it's so good. Oh I mean, it's God. like, it's so delicate and so rich in flavor. And it's not toxic to gluten-sensitive people. So people that are celiacs, and every other person you talk to today says, oh, wheat, I'm allergic to that. Right. Because right. wheat has been overbred. Uh -huh. And it's been bred to be... Um, to stand amidst the chemicals, intensive agrochemical inputs. Uh -huh. And the old wheats are organic. They were bred by traditional farmers and selected by traditional farmers. You can just eat it. Mm -hmm. But mostly, I'm just growing out what's been lost. Hmm. And, you know, we can only get 100 seeds from the gene bank, or I can only get a handful from farmers. How many are you planting here? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. start bringing, restoring the local wheat to the Pioneer River Valley? Well, it's really, um, you know, we started talking about it, urging and meeting about it three years ago, but you know what? This is it. Oh, wow, it this takes three really years it. to get it. So this is, uh, this is actually, today we're, we're baking bread, three different kinds of flat bread with three different kinds of local wheat. 
What did you do before you became a bread maniac? I was actually a songwriter. Uh-huh. Yeah. And a dad, staying home dad. And uh, hung sheetrock a lot. How old are your children? Um, we've got four kids. 13, 16, 18, and 22. She's over there. So now you're you're misting. Yep. You and need steam. You need a lot of steam. It's hard to have too much steam. I've been in bakeries where the the windows were just dripping with condensation. Steam will give you the, the crust and the color that you want. Did you cook at home when you were a stay-at-home dad? Oh yeah, I baked at home. I mean, that's how I. I, I opened up the Tassajara bread book, put the kid on the counter, and, and made it. So, you know, it was just... But you can buy bread. Why did you decide to bake bread? Well, you know, when you're a stay-at-home mom or dad, you've got to have stuff to do. <laughs> you're just... It's, it's a practice. It's a discipline. Now tell me, what what is this? What did you put on her? Uh, different greens for making bread grains. And, and what's the red? The amaranth. Oh my gosh. And who is this? Who is this? You look crazy. It's the green goddess. It's a green goddess? Hi. Yeah, these are fabulous. They made this one. They, they've made these gigantic puppets. These to show the grains and the spirit behind the grain revival of the Pioneer River Valley. Is one bean hole dinner from the next? Is it the hole or the bean? It's a guy cooking them. Of course it is. <laughs> you have so many variables. Uh, everyone's got their own little thing they do, and there's, everyone has everything they show everyone, and then there's something else maybe they do that nobody knows about. Now for you, what is that? Well, I can't say. <laughs> you sure? It's secret. <laughs> this is the pork. Pork and cabbage. Oh, that yeah. is gorgeous, Maynard. Just perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the blueberry cobbler. Make it go away. Make it go. Last time we had everybody out take okay. them. We didn't I know, we didn't have any, have any last time. time. <laughs> What's that tool called that you're using? This? Yeah, does it have a name? Lid. Just lid the lifter. name. A lid lifter. Just, yeah. Just. <laughs> Just for lifting the lid. I think we're ready. Maynard's ready to serve. Maynard! Ready to eat. Oh, sorry, Maynard. Pick up your plate. You, you can tell right. that I don't like to miss the yeah, You can dig in whatever okay. you want there. What's, what is this? Pork? That's uh, pork loin mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of cabbage and onions. Oh, God. What a great idea. Where did you learn how to make this? I don't know. You don't know? Just, it just developed. <laughs> <laughs> Would you tell me something? <laughs> What's the difference between sinking yeah. these and yeah. put them on, on the wood and burying them in the ground? Why not just put them in the oven? When you cook these in a hole in the ground, in an in-ground oven, with the wood in there, these beans are going to be boiling violently. When you first put them in, they're going to cook like crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's going to that's going to create uh, a negative air pressure inside the kettle. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, when that fire starts dying down, we're just going to draw. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when it draws, the only thing it can draw is the, the atmosphere and the smoke and the flavors of the wood that's in the hole. Oh, that's see. why you'll get a little smoky yeah. flavor with these beans that you won't get by cooking the same recipe in your oven at home. Or your microwave. Microwave? What's that? <laughs> you can't cook beans in a microwave. They'll explode. <laughs> You know your water's here. 
let's have a brief refresher course in the location of water. Okay, remember? Here, this is your good health food. Now, come on, honey. I want yeah. junk food. I don't like this healthy stuff. Now, listen, can you give me your exact address? Okay. What is it? What all do you do to the shells? This is just design cooking right here. <laughs> this is a this is a whole new form of cooking. This is right from the restaurant. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, and and so they save this for you every day. The detritus from lunch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking the body out because I just want the top part. That's going to be part of our bracelet. Yeah. Yeah, how about the, the little butter container there? It could be an earring. In the, how cool would that be? In, in the bracelet. You have a hard time stopping. Just like in cooking, you just you add just a little bit more, a pinch of this, one more little cranberry leaf to the flower petal. Look at that. That's very cute. You have cranberries, dried apples, lobster tail, clams. Oh my gosh. And, and so if, if the microphone's in there and we're having a really long shoot and I need a snack, I can just go down like that. <laughs> no, go like, you know, yes, there we go. This is, this is the, this is the hand. Um, Look at that. I'll take a knife, peel that off. And my hogs love that. Let's go, Homer. <laughs> <laughs> my mom, she is a professional cook. Really? Yeah, she didn't peddle dick around either. Got a newspaper over there, John. You want me to scoop that out for you? I can be trusted with the with, uh, easy oh, task. Right. It's kind of stringy on the inside, almost like a the beginning of a spaghetti squash, isn't Don't it? Throw them seeds in there. Don't throw the seeds where? In the garbage. That's for replanting next year. Oh shoot! You've heard about the watermelon says, "Eat the meat, pickle the rind, save the seed till planting time." So, Steve, I hear you made you had two kinds of moonshine. What were they? Fighting kind, loving kind. You don't want to get on that fighting kind. <laughs> the fighting kind and the loving kind? Yeah. Is that okay? Mash it down. Mash, mash it down? down. Back and forth. Okay, like that? Yeah. Stir it up and mash it down again. Okay. It's hard work, Jimmy. Okay. How am I doing? You're looking good. <laughs> I'll put you on regular if you want to go to work. <laughs> Oh God. Mm. I've uh I'll tell you, I've never I've never worked a dough this much. I, I thought That's the whole what it, you don't you work it too much and it'll be tough, but you That's about right. That's right? You like it? You're happy? Yeah, I'm happy okay. with you. <laughs> I wanted to ask you if, if I could, if you could tell me the story of your life through bread. Like, what's the first bread you remember growing up in Albany? I think I ate bad bread most of my life. There was a pretty good baker in Albany named Freihofer, mm -hmm. and we had some of their bread, and it was better than the stuff in a plastic wrapper. Mm -hmm. But we had mostly the bread in a plastic <laughs> wrapper. Baking bread, there's something magic about yeast. 
that appeals to anyone, I think. I mean, it just, it does something that uh, nothing else does. It's just, I get the same satisfaction out of baking bread that I got building this little building that I write in. Uh, I did it myself, and uh, it's creative, and uh, I suppose it's about the same. Do you remember where you got your first recipe? Recipe? For bread? I don't use a recipe on anything. Take care of things in the Pentagon. I'm Molly. Hi. Thank you so much. Yay, welcome. <laughs> it was delicious. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Now, did you cook in Japan? I um, bought uh, the, um, DVDs, sushi DVDs from Japan. You did not? Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> I taught myself to. That is amazing. <laughs> but, but, you know, I have In to, front of the television? You worked with the DVDs? Actually, I didn't do any, I, I just watched. I, yes, I, and I read several books about sushi. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My original idea was very small sushi bar on Main Street. Uh -huh. Myself working, just myself. Yes. Uh -huh. But uh, happened to find this space. When did you open? About three years and three years ago. And where did you find all your, your friends in the kitchen? <laughs> all of them live around here. No kidding. In Rockland, yeah. So the 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 cooks and the sushi makers are women. Yes. Um, that would be unusual in Japan too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Day. Well, your book's day all published now, begin. now you can just forget about it now. This is your fireplace pizza? Yep. Okay. Which we're going to eat, I think, in about an hour or so. Okay. Okay. And nice bowl made in the workshop. Hey, you're a pro. Well, I You really know, know what you're doing. I didn't think I was a pro until I tried showing someone else how to do this. Well, don't they say you should knead with the tips of your fingers? They do, but I love the way you're stretching it simultaneously. Do you want to have a go? Heck no. Yes. Okay, so now we chop it up. Okay. Lovely airy dough. When did you get into doing this? The pizza dough. This is a new thing because we got that fireplace. Yeah. And then I thought, right, I've got to. But bread is my main thing. What's so appealing about it? Making bread? Yeah. Um, I think it's to do with, uh, I don't know. There's something like storage about bread. It's like putting, packing something away. Can I interject? Yeah, why do, you, why do I like making it's bread? It's like making pots. It, it yeah. calms them down. Uh -huh. It definitely calms me down. Yeah. Like I mean, it, 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 I was the only 18-year-old I know that um, had a grass collection. Yeah. Not dope, but grass. <laughs> Grasses. So Charlie it kills, I gave it to my brother. Grass. But what's that got to do with why I like making bread? Oh, wait a minute, bread? wait a minute. You collected grass? Yeah, just to give you an idea, all these grasses are really wheats and barleys. And anyway, he knows he can tell you when they're in flower, and, and that's what, you know, made me fall for him, really. So I'm just gonna, I'm getting a bit worried about all this getting dried out. This is entertaining to watch, right? You know, Charles, if you yes. did it... <laughs> Look, 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 look. This is so easy. Look, look, look. Oh, okay. You can get yeah. what you want just by reversing directions sometimes. My life is controlled by an army of therapists, and I think you're going to be actually the next one. Okay, that's fine. I sign up. So tell me about this odyssey. Um, you've been making, so you've been making furniture, and your wife's been making pottery for 150 years. Yeah. And we get bored in the winter, so I said, I challenge you to a crumpet making competition. And so that was the beginning, so we decided to have a crumpet or a competition or a crump off. So what's so, what's so hard about making a crumpet? It's something about getting, it's cooking it and getting them, a crumpets are, are about this round, mm -hmm. and they're meant to have holes in the top. 
Uh-huh. Um, so we're going to see. Anyway. So what did you use? My for mood the normally holes? takes a major nosedive if they come out wrong. Or, oh, or so no. if you've got anything sort of fun to say, this is the moment. Oh, okay, okay. Two okay. teaspoons of yeast. We've only got a few grapes. One, two. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, how many cups of warm water? Half a cup. No, I, I, a correction. One cup. Sorry. God. I know. I know. Sift flour. Yeah. Milk and salt into another bowl. You can't sift milk. What does it say? Oh, what? it's powdered milk. Of yeah. Now we milk. we failed on getting the powdered milk. Do you think Cremora will be all right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll just forget the powdered milk, recipe okay? Writing. You desperately need a lesson in recipe writing. So, three cups of plain white flour sifted together with one and a half teaspoons of salt. Did you ever think of owning a restaurant, Molly? I did that, yeah. Oh, you actually had a restaurant? I did. And how did. was it? Um, yeah, I once owned a women's restaurant that served nonviolent cuisine. You serious? I'm totally serious. So, yeah, amazing. it was hilarious. What was it called? The Common Woman Club. Was it all women in there? Yeah, absolutely. Male dogs weren't allowed. Okay. Ah. Remember that? <laughs> This is like, this is like a very bad cooking show. Um, confidence is the name of the game, right? Well, that seems to be something you're not sure you have. No, no you got you're that right. You're not confident it's of perceptive. your confidence. Okay. Oh, Why is it coming out? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take a break? Maybe do a little meditation, a little yoga? Ready to go in the oven? Yeah. Mm. Mm. What do you think, Asriel? Is it all right? It's really good. So we've gone for 15 minutes. Did it do anything? Yeah, uh, no. Okay. So uh, preheat a heavy, we've done that, right? Yeah. Okay. You ready? You ready? What do you think? That sort of crumpety looking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. This is where you sort of lose your temper, throw it around the room. Where are the holes? They're gone. It is the thing is a complete mystery as to what makes these things work. Yeah, they're really getting going now. They're, they're very excited. Are you getting it? You don't oh! sleep tonight. Oh, man, this is so cool. <laughs> Ever you haven't solved it. I basically got angry, heated the whole frickin' thing up. Oh, nice. He's a happy man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see that, right? Don't look like hockey pucks either. You stay, stay, stay. We'll be right back. <laughs>